Hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing great. Welcome to the third video for highway engineering. So in last video, I think we completed question number 30, right? And today I'm looking to cover question number 31 to question number 40. So in this video, we will cover these 10 questions. So let's start with question number 31. So question is saying that the convexity provided to the carriageway between crown and edge of pavement is known as our options are super elevation, camber, height of pavement and none of these. So let's see what actually is. What actually are these terms super elevation, camber, height of pavement? Then it will become easy for us to choose the right answer. So in this slide you can see that camber is you can see the elevation we provide on the road or the water flow of the road surface is known as camber. Right? And cambers are of three types. One is parabolic camber. You can see this. And then straight line camber. And then parabolic and straight line, in which the center part is parabolic and the outer sides are straight. That is called combination of straight and parabolic cambers. So this is our camber, and the top of this camber is known as crown. We call it crown. And what is super elevation? Super elevation is expressed as uh, expressed as the height of the outer edge of the pavement with respect to the width of the pavement. So you can see in this image. Let me zoom it in. You got it. This part and this height of this pavement is called super elevation. So most of the time, super elevation is in the uh, in the places where there is a turn in the road, right? In case of the straight roads, if it is straight, there will be no super elevation like in these images. The outer edge there is no height, so the super elevation is zero here. And you can also see that the camber is making an convex shape. Right, this convex shape is called can camber. Either it is in parabolic, straight, or combination of both. So let's go to the question. The convexity, right? Convex means this one. This is the convex shape. The convexity provided to the carriage way. This is called carriage way. From here to here, this is called carriage way, right? So the convexity provided to the carriage way between crown and edge. This top is crown and this is edge. So the convexity provided on the road or the carriage way from the crown to the edge is called camber. So for question number 31, our right option is camber. Next question. 32. If the difference in elevation of an edge of the pavement is 9 meter wide and its crown is 15 centimeter, the camber of the pavement is uh, the things which we uh, we are provided with is the the difference in elevation of an edge of the pavement. The pavement is 9 meter wide and its crown is 15 centimeters. The cam what will be the uh, ratio in the camber? So it's some sort of numerical. We have an equation for straight camber, right? For straight camber, the equation is y is equal to w divided by 2n. W is the width of the road, n is the slope, y is the height of the camber or crown. So when we put all these values, we will get n. We have w width given, we have y, which is the height of camber. When we put these values here, we will get n as 30. 
right n is the slope so our slope gradient will be 1 into 30 so we need to remember this equation for uh, camber the equation for straight camber so option number c is the right answer for 30 question number 32 the next question is 33 in scanty rainfall regions the camber provided will be either nil flatter steeper or none of these let's see what actually is scanty rainfall regions actually the regions that receive least amount of rain are known as scanty rainfall regions so actually the main purpose of providing a camber is that is to uh, run off take out the water flow from the road surface right in secondary uh, secondary uh, rainfall regions there is no rain so actually there is no need of slopey chambers cambers slopey cambers on the road so we need to provide steeper or flatter flatter uh, cambers in the regions where there is very less rainfall secondary rainfall regions so the right answer for this is will be b we need to provide flatter cambers in the regions where there is very less rainfall steeper will be in those regions where there is more rainfall so option b is the right answer next question 34 on concrete road the chamber generally provided is the options we have uh, five options so let's see which option is right actually uh, in the key for the answers given in this book they have mentioned this option e as the right answer but for me option d is the right answer so let's see why i am going with the on concrete roads this is talking about concrete roads right the camber provided is this is the table you can see this is the recommended values of cambers in roads for different type of road surfaces this is recommended by irc so if it is concrete cement pavement or road then we provide 1 into 60 or 1 into 50 if it is a low rainfall region we provide 160 1 into 60 and heavy rainfall 1 into 50 so the most closest option is 1 into 48 and 1 into 60 right 1 into 50 and 1 into 60 this one is the closest option we provide this for the concrete pavements or concrete roads so for me the option d is right but in this book of agar they have given this answer right so i'm going with d if you guys uh, have any reason for option e to be correct you can let me know in the comments next question is 35 and this question is relevant to the above question in the above question it was related to concrete roads and question number 35 is related to earth roads for earth roads this one earth roads we provide 1 into 33 and 1 into 25 1 into 33 and 1 into 25 so the right option will be a because this is the closest to the recommendation 1 into 33 and 1 into 25 option a is correct for question number 35 and next question 36 excessive camber on pavement may cause actually if we provide the camber excess elevation more height and more elevation then it can cause the effects are it reduces the road width as everyone will try to move in the middle of the road right if you give excessive road camber height and the second is the road will wear and tear on the edges on the edges edges of the road will wear and tear the passengers feel 
and like your drive or your journey will be unbalanced and discomfortable if you provide excessive road camber chances of accident will increase so these are the drawbacks of uh, providing excessive road camber height let's see the options option a is deterioration of central portion this is right if we give excessive height to the chamber it will deteriorate the central portion of the road option b slip of the speedy vehicle towards the edge this is also right erosion of the bumps this is also right so all of the above options are right if we give height or excess excessive chamber on the pavement it will cause all these three so all of the above option option d is right next question is chamber in pavements is provided by let's see as in this picture you can see there are different types of cambers parabolic we can give a parabolic shape to the camber straight lines to the camber either the combination of both parabolic and straight on the edges so these are the three types of the camber so in this question question number 37 camber in the pavements is provided by straight line method right parabolic method this is also right straight at the edge and parabolic at the ground this is also right so the all of the above option option d is right for question number 37. next question question number 38 on a pavement with parabolic camber okay the angle of in, uh, inclination of the vehicle will be obviously let's see if we look at the parabolic shape it is actually almost straight in the center right but at the edges it is sloppy but if we look into this straight one it is sloppy more sloppy at the crown portion at the center right so what is the question the question is asking that on a pavement with parabolic camber the angle of inclination of the vehicle will be where it will be more angle of inclination will be more at the edges in the parabolic cases in the parabolic camber if camber is parabolic the inclination will be more at the edges in case of straight the inclination will be more at the center so here they are asking about the parabolic camber so in parabolic camber the angle of inclination will be more at the edges so option c is right next question question number 39 the camber on pavement is provided by again this is the same question 37 if you look at the 37 camber in the pavement is provided by all these three right again they are asking the same question the camber on the pavement is provided by so it should be there should be an option of all of the above but they have not given the option of all of the above they in this book they have selected option number c as the right answer but i am not sure for me option a option b and option c these three are right answers for this question the next and last question is uh, question 40 if the elevation along the road increases okay the slope of road along the longitudinal direction is known as let's see what actually is gradient and positive grade and negative grade then we can choose the right answer if elevation along the road increases then that is positive grade if elevation is decreasing that is called negative grade right so here they are asking sorry here they are asking about the elevation if the elevation along the road increases the slope of the road along the longitudinal direction is known as for me it is positive grade but in uh, the answer key they have given option a as the right answer in one case it uh, option a can be right answer that is that first of all we uh, we call it gradient after that we divide the gradient into positive and negative 
grades. So maybe if we look to the answer in this scenario, then we can select gradient as the right option. Right option. Otherwise, they have clearly mentioned that if the elevation of uh, elevation along the road increases, obviously when the elevation increases, that is called positive grade. But in other scenario, as I said, if we consider this definition, that uh, first we call it gradient. After that, we divide the gradient into positive and negative. So we can choose option A as right answer in that case. So I am going with option C. So that's it for today's video, video number three. In next video, fourth video, we will cover question forty-one till question number fifty. So see you guys in next video. Goodbye.